Mr. Speaker, sir. This is one of those moments when I wish I were not an ex officio member of parliament so that when the question is put, I would shout the loudest. Unfortunately, I'm silenced by the constitution and the rules of parliament. We shouldn't reduce the Honorable Henry Chamber to the size of a school, to the size of a clan, to the size of a community. We only make those references because everything has a credo. We talk about Jesus of Nazareth, but he was not about Nazareth. His mission was universal. Just like the mission of this Prince Henry Chamber was national, Pan-African, and global. Many will talk about the offices of distinction that he held. But running through all those offices is one thing, Mr. Speaker, character. It boils down to character. That's what the measure of the man is. So we condole with the family. We condole with the government of Uganda and the president. We condole with parliament. And we condole with the whole of Uganda and all the friends. We celebrate his achievements. And in doing that, let's talk about his roots, how he was formed. What was he made of? How did he view himself and how did he view the world? In the city of Jinja, where I grew up, and I spent many happy years as a child, there is a, a road called Lubas Road. It had uh, two cinemas. Those who know, they know. Town talkies, dingoes, but there was also a very well-known law firm where I did my internship, Mutiavule Kisada and Company Advocates. And that's where my story and connection with the Honorable Henry Chamber begins. Because Senior Counsel Elijah Mutiavule Kisada was my professional mentor. He carried himself the very way that Honorable Henry Chamber carried himself with dignity. You only needed to look at him and ask, who, who is that? You know, there are, there are those who you look at and you want to know who they are. Somehow, whether, whether they hold any, any office or not. But Luba's Road is also named after Chief Luba of the Bunya Chiefdom in Busoga. As you may know, Chief Luba is the one whose name is indelibly associated with the murder of Bishop Huntington, reportedly on the orders of Kabaka Mwanga. Perhaps you need to know that Chief Luba was Honorable Henry Chambers' grandfather. He used to joke that because of the notoriety of the murder of Bishop Huntington, their family had to do something spectacular. So they produced a bishop. As a way of making amends with the, the church and perhaps God. So, Honorable Baba, your amends came much later, perhaps. 
the real amends were already done in the, in the bigger platform. He exuded integrity. Of course, integrity has many definitions, but mine is that integrity means doing what is right rather than what is convenient. What is convenient is usually the things which will bring applause. Sometimes what is right is not really convenient because it may attract insults sometimes. And I'm sure he's going to be scrutinized forever. But you cannot understand something unless you understand it in its very context. Americans celebrate George Washington, but they don't know that he owned slaves. So you must understand the man in the context of his times. What would you do? So in relation to the choices he made, we can only say, judge not that ye may not be judged. He had discipline. Very good timekeeper. He had humility. We all know that. He was willing to talk to all of us. Honorable Kotogong referred to that. He taught many of us how to be members of parliament. Some of us came here with flaming swords, like live conductors to electrocute everything that we would find here. Some of us came with very unpopular messages. I think, Mr. Speaker, I may be on record as probably the most booed MP in the record of parliament. Every time I opened my mouth, it is as if I was saying something people didn't want to hear. E.g., talk to Joseph Coyne. Oh, 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 this, that. And you say, give amnesty. Ah, return multipartism. Ah, never. But you, you must listen to that voice inside you. That is what was referred to here as conscience. After all, some things change, some things don't change. So you are better off fixing your eye on the things that you know will never change. He had courage. There are two types of courage. There is the physical courage, as in facing physical danger. But there is even the tougher kind of courage, which is moral courage, which simply means taking a stand. That book was banned in Uganda. Those who were alive, they know that. State of blood was banned because it said things which the government did not want to be revealed. So, as I close, Mr. Speaker, and in the spirit of peering beyond the horizons in our country, our country is hurting. Our country needs reconciliation. Not reconciliation between two people, but reconciliation between the building blocks that make Uganda. If you are lost, you go back to a familiar place. Those of us who took long to come to Kampala, we knew, for instance, the post office. So if you got lost, you ask, where is the post office? Even if that's not where you are going. But at least you are sure that from the post office, you can find your way. So let's go back to the Constitution, because that should be the real point of departure, because that is the consensus on which we are building ourselves. I beg to disagree with those who are talking about scandal, no scandal. In this world, there is something called redemption. Actually, Peter, who formed the foundation of the church, was very scandalous. And he committed a real scandal of denying Jesus. Paul, who we quote every day in the Bible, was full of scandals. So let us realize that nations are built because of a commitment to renewal. A nation can renew itself. Every institution can renew itself. And sometimes it is those very people 
who you think uh, they fall below the standards who may come and do the things. How could the clerk, the leader of the party of apartheid, be the ones to be the partner of Mandela? How did Moi become the architect of the new constitution of Kenya? I was there when he was being booed, but he did it. So, even if we criticize those who are battling on the fronts of national renewal, and they may have checkered records, and they may be doing things that we disapprove of strongly, nevertheless, we must not lose sight of the fact that it is possible to have renewal. So, uh, if we don't, Mr. No, Speaker, as the, I close... The one of Mao, you first seek permission. Or we don't just switch on again. Okay? Yes. Just conclude. Please. You know, we were taught that when the speaker is speaking, you must sit down. That's why I was heading to my seat. C conclude. Th I though I see that doesn't thing. happen here these days. So, Mr. Speaker, there's a danger in this country that the past is being glorified. Particularly by those who never lived in that past. We went to primary schools which were closed so that we could go and witness firing squad. We were children. And an army jeep would come and close the school and say, there is an important event taking place. Come and witness. We lived washing clothes with popo leaves because there was no soap. Dear friends, Mr. Speaker, sir, in the words of a wise man, let us not open a war between the past and the present. Otherwise, we shall lose the future. The future is bright. And Uganda can be renewed. So when you now see people thinking that Idi Amin could be an alternative to the present, I shudder to think of that. However bad the present may be, in your view, Please, don't even think about that, those days. And we should not stigmatize the community from where Idi Amin came. We must base our judgments on the philosophy of individual responsibility for individual crimes. Every tribe produces good people. Every tribe produces bad people. I never get tired of saying that we may have produced the likes of Joseph Coyne, but we also produced Jan and Luwum. How do you reconcile that? Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Mao. Dr. Honorable Manji, Roman MP, Ginger. The city. Switch on. Thank you so much, Mr. Speaker for the opportunity you've given to me to pay tribute to our own honorable chamber. Right honorable speaker, I was worried when you started mentioning leaders from Jinja City and you were not mentioning me. I, so I kept on wondering how you could talk about Jinja City and you don't talk about I myself, a senior leader from the city. Uh, Mr. Speaker, it is very unfortunate that we've lost a great leader who has served this country in different capacities with passion. As Ginger City, I want to say that we've lost a senior resident, a man of wisdom, and a person of value to the people of Ginger. The late Honorable Chamber has been a man of wisdom, and we've been consulting We've been going to his place and make consultations about many matters concerning Ginger City, the country at large. 
and he has been ready and available to offer free information whenever approached. So as Ginger City, we've lost someone so senior and we shall never remain the same. The late Honorable Chamber, having served in different governments and in different capacities, during his time as a political leader, he encouraged the value of education, especially to the young people in Busoga and Junja particularly. He hoped so many and supported the underprivileged to have scholarships within and outside the country. Unlike nowadays, it is the privileged who gain from the scholarships. As a politician, the late Honorable Chamber, he has been a big inspiration to many politicians in Ibusoga and Jinja. He has served his country diligently. And one thing I remember about him is that even him, after quitting active politics, he has remained as a humble man and he has been living a free life. He has tried so much to avoid getting involved in scandals of fighting his opponents. I remember so well, I want to recognize Mama Janet Chamber. I, con I contested with her in the recent elections. But even if the late Honorable Chamber had connections in the government, he never, I didn't see him anywhere trying to disorganize the election process. Even when I won as a family, they congratulated me. Therefore, is a man of no scandal. As a lesson to this government, we should always try as much as possible to avoid persecuting and oppressing our political opponents. I'm very sure and I do believe that the late Honorable Chamber didn't support the kidnaps and abductions that are happening currently in our country. I do believe that when I believe in National Unit Platform and you believe in NRM, we should always disagree on principle. But it is very unfortunate that even nowadays, you ask opposition members of parliament to ask for permission to have prayers, you can imagine. Therefore, as a country, we need to emulate a lot from the late Honorable Chamber. Right, Honorable Speaker, I really want to thank government. I really want to thank government for offering for offering our own late chamber uh, a state funeral. But at the same time, as the Soga region, we should also take the opportunity that you think about Soga as a region. It is very unfortunate that recently, as the president was in Busoga, Can I conclude, please? He stood and even wondered, and he said, I really wonder how people of Busoga live in this kind of poverty. Yet we have very capable and intelligent leaders from Busoga. <laughs>